when I look at a class to go over in a video just like this one, I look at things that can be interesting, that can be surprises maybe. Some interesting numbers, some surprising numbers. We're looking at how the specs of the class have changed from one expansion to the other. If they had certain weaknesses that have been fixed or if they had a certain weaknesses that, that have been amplified in the expansion, maybe new strengths, maybe they have lost strengths. We can look at raids, we can look at Mythic Plus, we can look at how they have gone. We have gone through Druid and now Paladin in this type of videos and now we are going through Warrior. Because Warrior is in a peculiar situation with this expansion, we are going to see exactly what happened compared to the previews, not just BFA but even Legion and even Worlds of Draenor. If you want the spoiler to cut the entire video and quit now, it's basically the worst situation of Warrior in the past three expansions. Numbers at hand, data at hand, it's not very good. So let's start and look at in which situation exactly does Warrior find itself in compared to the previous expansions right now in the first tier of Shadowlands. Starting with protection, because at this point we have to actually talk about it. You know, it, it, it has been so recurring that some of you watching were kids when this was happening. So this is Warrior in Blackrock Foundry. What? That's Worlds of Draenor, that's six years ago. In a couple of weeks it will, it will be the anniversary of the Blackrock Foundry release, six years ago, and this was Protection Warrior already back then behind a couple of tanks that you will go on to see quite often in the tiers of raiding, which is Brewmaster Monk and Blood DK. When you go after Blackrock Foundry in the last year of Worlds of Draenor to Hellfire, you see, again, Protection Warrior in the bottom half. This time though, Brewmaster, interestingly, has a complete drop. Okay, fine. You go into Legion, right? Nighthold, Protection is at the bottom. Tomb of Sargeras, Protection is at the bottom. Antorus, Protection is at the bottom. Okay, fine. What about BFA then? BFA, Protection is in the bottom half with a big numbers difference compared to Blood and Brewmaster. Battle of the Zara Lore. Protection is in the bottom half. Again, Brewmaster and Blood super popular. What about Eternal Palace? Again, Blood and Brewmaster at the top. Protection in the bottom half. We close with Nyalota. Again, Protection Warrior in the bottom half. And now we start this entire expansion on Castonatria and Protection Warrior is at the bottom again. This time at the lowest it's been in terms of gap between the others. The only raid that I skipped was of course Legion Emerald Nightmare. This is the only time Protection Warrior was relevant and popular. As you can see, even in Emerald Nightmare, its playability and popularity was very very close actually to Protection Paladin and Blood DK. Very similar amount of representation. And for all of you who will remember the Emerald Nightmare, it was a joke raid. It was very short, not very difficult at all, lasted very little, so Unfortunately, the only time Protection Warrior has been in the spotlight was for a useless raid. And this is six years, fellas. This has been the representation of Protection Warrior so far. It has now gone a long time since Protection Warrior was a good, solid tank, like the good old boomer days of Vanilla or TBC. No, we're talking about six years. We're talking about almost ten tiers at this point, where Protection has basically been forgotten, gone. Then we move on to Mythic Plus, because maybe, maybe this could be an explanation. The tank is not very popular in, in raids, but at least they have gotten very good representation in Mythic Plus, so you could consider this, you know, a Mythic Plus tank. Some people would take this deal, right? Well, no, because even in the first seasons of Legion Mythic Plus, Protection Warrior was already unpopular compared to the popular specs in raid. For example, the first tier of Legion where Guardian Druid was the more popular tank in raids, guess what? It was also the most popular tank in Mythic Plus, followed by Blood Death Knight. You go further into the expansion, you have the drop on Guardian Druid for in favor of Blood DK, and Protection Warrior isn't really gaining anything. And then you have the exacerbation of Blood Death Knight's power in the last tier of Legion with this abomination. When you go and look at Mythic Plus in BFA, I mean, this is not too long ago, you should remember, we have Protection Warrior being very unpopular at the start, and then when Blizzard applies, the band-aid fixes to Protection Warrior on top of their scaling, which creates this endless loop of their essences and their traits, other traits, that is going to make them a thunderclap spamming machine. You can see that finally Protection Warrior becomes more relevant in Mythic Plus 
not just due to their defensiveness, their massive rage generation, allowing them to spam Ignore Pain, but more importantly, their damage from their Avatar plus Thunder Cup combo. But that was a brief moment. It was a brief moment because as they have lost their borrowed powers from BFA, which allowed them to work like that, this is now the situation in Shadowlands, the lowest used tank by a landslide, not just in raids, but now also in Mythic Plus. Now, before we go over the final thoughts of a spec like this, we have to go back to Arms and Fury. Because, historically speaking, Arms and Fury as DPS warriors have always been very popular. They have always been represented in raids. Regardless of their actual performance, you still saw lots of warriors in raids. When you go similar to protection all the way back to BRF, Blackrock Foundry in Warlords of Draenor, you can see that Warrior was in the top 6 of popularity with Fury. You go up in Hellfire, and again, you have two different Warrior specs in the top 10, top 11, I guess, which is very rare. For example, for Hunters, Mages, or Rogues to have two different specs so high. When you go over a new expansion in Legion, and Warrior is again in the top 5 of popularity, you can go past Emerald Nightmare and go and look at Nighthold, and again, Fury is in the top 4. And then you have Tomb of Sargeras, and this time it's Arms that's in the top 3. You can go over and look at Uldir, and there is again Warrior very high. After Uldir, you can go to BOD, and there is another Fury Warrior in top 6. And then, by the end, in Nyalota, this was the situation for Arms and Fury. And we finish all of this with the current situation, which is Castonatria, of course, where Arms is currently doing very well. Now, when you look at the performance, how they were doing, Warrior has also historically done very well in raids, in terms of damage, even when, as I pointed out, they were sort of middle of the pack, they still remain very popular. Anyways, you have their damage being amongst the top. In Tomb of Sargeras, in Emerald Nightmare, they were somewhat in the middle, so they, they have improved as the expansion went on. Just like in Uldir, they were in the middle. In Battle of the Dark Lord, they were also in the middle. And then suddenly, Eternal Palace comes in, and you got a double warrior in the top 7 of DPS, and by the end of Nyalota, you have the absolute horror that was this thing. Very rare to see two different specs of the same class being so high. As the classic meme continues about warrior scaling. When you go and look at Mythic Plus, warrior has been pretty represented when you think about it. Again, your you know memory is going to be somewhat ruined by the fact that Havok, Demon Hunters and Rogues have sort of dominated the representation, but in terms of general popularity, especially at the lower keys, Warrior has consistently been the third most used melee DPS spec just behind Havok and Rogue. They have always stayed above Ret, of course, Survival, Death Knights, every single season of Mythic Plus except for this one, and then of course Enhancement, Windwalker and Feral Druid. In several of the seasons, they have even been above Havok, Demon Hunter, except for the very high keys. So pretty much regardless of their performance, Warrior is just a popular class. Many people play Warrior, so regardless of when they are performing well or performing badly, there is still going to be an excess of Warrior players. They are in a similar situation as something like Hunters, for example. Now, when we talk about Warriors though, we have to talk about something else. Because I want to give some hope to DPS Warriors right now, we have to look at the situation of their DPS right now, which is this. So this is very fresh. From yesterday, in the past couple of weeks, this is how it's looking for Arms and Fury. Fury is about to be buffed, so they should be going up to, to Arms level, but still very, very low. Now, Warrior, since the dawn of time, has had the niche of the Execute phase. This type of damage is sort of misleading because of how effective Warrior can be in certain parts of the encounter. For example, when you look at Hunger and Destroyer, right, it would look that Warrior is useless. Now, this is an average warrior in Angering Destroyer, being middle of the pack. But this is the warrior damage in Execute phase, which is when they play Massacre from 35% of the boss's HP. You go and look at Zymox, and this is the warrior during Zymox, and then you look at the Execute phase, and warrior is here. You look at another warrior in Zymox, this is even lower. Look at him. He's logging 93 percentile, and he's barely above a 62 percentile Balanced Druid. But then you look at Execute Phase, and he is here. So Warrior always has had this part, this strength, in their toolkit. 
it is misleading to look at them and seeing them at the bottom of the rankings when they can have such a powerful, strong point in their DPS toolkit, the execute. Because in most encounters, the last phase is going to be the hardest, the last phase is the toughest, is the one you want to make, and faster. Even, even in certain encounters where the middle phase, you know, or the second out of three or the third out of four phases is the hardest. For example, Altimor, the second dog, Bargast, is going to be the hardest. Even in phases where normally, if you go back in time, for example, Ajara, the second, the middle phase was the, was the hardest part, not really the end. Even then, the last phase is still harder than it normally would because you reach the point where healers are running out of mana, the external cooldowns are, are all gone, there's nothing left. People have used their potions, they have used their defensives, there are more and more people dying, so it becomes a race against time, sometimes a race against enrage, so it does become very important to, to rush the boss basically, to kill the boss as quickly as possible. And that's where warriors shine. Sometimes it's literally, even though it might not make sense to, to some of you, sometimes it's going to be better to be doing 20% less damage for 80% of the encounter if you can do 10% more damage for the last 20%. Because getting to the first 80% of the boss's HP won't really require you to have that high DPS. Whereas the last 20% is going to be very important. So you're willing to lose DPS for most of the fight by keeping a warrior in instead of, I don't know, an affliction warlock. Just so you can have better execute at the end. You know, this expansion, Warriors Execute has gotten even better, of course. They have Condemn and they have this conduit, Ashen Juggernaut, which is one of the strongest conduits in the game in terms of DPS increase. It is actually showing as only a measly 5%, but when you look at the actual damage increase of execute phase, this goes to past 15% effectiveness, which, which would be the highest conduit in the game in terms of DPS increase. I mean, this buffs your execute and this is what Warrior does in execute phase. You literally have more casts of Condemn than basically your entire toolkit combined. You know, this is how it looks when a Warrior is in execute phase. And you know, with Condemn and with Massacre, you are in Execute Phase for 55% of the boss's HP. From 100 to 80 and from 35 to 0. That's Warrior. This is Warrior. So, yeah, sure, not very fun, I guess, to play, but can be very effective. Which is why also I think that DPS Warrior is in this peculiar situation that even if logs are not showing them performing as well, they will still be able to hold a pretty powerful slot simply because of their ability to be powerful in execute phase you know their, their, their lower performance overall doesn't point out how powerful they can be still in execute phase which also brings the problems on how you would actually balance them because if you look at the total damage you're like oh well crap they are shit we need to buff them by 20 percent but if they are already doing 20 percent more damage than everyone else in execute phase what, what happens if you buff them by 20 percent on top of that you know at this point you would just re remove all the melee just bring a Vengeance Demon Hunter and just use Warriors for Execute phase, right? So what do you do? Do you buff them by 20% and nerf their Execute? They have had Execute as their niche, as their strongest point for like a decade. Are, are you going to take that away? So it's a tough situation. Whenever Warrior is balanced to be middle of the pack, they will eventually show up as being one of the better specs in raids, simply because their Execute is so strong that being middle of the pack in overall damage means they will do far and away the most damage in Execute phase, which is going to be the more important phase of an encounter, which means Warrior is going to be one of the better specs for that fight. This has happened now for several expansions, several tiers, every time it was the same thing. The only reason this time isn't showing up to be as strong as previous expansions is because the base power of Warrior is lower. It's at the bottom. That's what it takes to basically make them more balanced, to be at the bottom of the meters so they have the strongest execute. So it's a good counterbalance. It's a good counterbalance that is going to leave the DPS warriors somewhat depressed because they know they know they are strong in execute phase, but when they look at the actual logs and meters, they are always at the bottom. So it kind of leaves you a, a bittersweet taste in your mouth when you look at that. It's kind of the opposite of some of the mediocre specs that always show up at the top of the meters because they have lots of AoE. So even if they're not doing the best boss damage, you know, the best priority target damage, they will always be high in the meters because of the accidental AoE they can do, like in, in BFA for Havoc Demon Hunter, for example, or even Fire Mage with their Ignite spread. So some warriors will like this, some warriors will not. Honestly, I'm not too sure how you would balance this because of how powerful they can be in Execute phase. I'm not a developer, so I won't try. 
but it is pretty tricky because it doesn't take much to basically lose control and make warrior again with the meme scale in the expansion and make them one of the better melee dps specs as they have been in most of the tiers by now after the first tier sometimes after the second tier they end up being the better melee dps spec so we'll have to see this expansion what happens when it comes to dps when it comes to tank on the other hand when it comes to tank it's a more tricky situation because at this point we have seen that essentially protection has never been the most popular tank spec for the past six years just once in emerald nightmare they have never been popular in mythic plus as well with the exception of the couple of tiers at, at the mid to end bfa where they were scaling out of control with their borrowed powers their azurite traits their essence allowing them massive regeneration massive ignore pain usage plus the thunderclap spam now they have lost all of that they have gotten their talents jumbled around now you can't use the same combo of talents you were using before for the massive thunderclap damage and uh, cooldown reduction on your last stand on your shield wall you can still get a pretty good cooldown reduction on last stand or on shield wall if you do both you're losing a lot of damage in return so they are in this tricky situation where they see all their stuff from BFA that they had, but they can't take it all. They have to choose. And this creates a problem because Warrior is also in this weird situation where they have two active mitigation abilities, but one is extremely specific, uh, Shield Block. Shield Block being about blocking melee attacks. So it doesn't even block all physical damage, or rather it doesn't even reduce all physical damage, just the melee attacks. So unlike, for example, Shield of the Righteous of a, of a Paladin, which just increases your armor, a Demon Spikes of a Demon Hunter, which also increases your armor, Iron Fur, guess what? Increasing your armor, Protection Warrior is different. They just get block of melee attacks. Well, guess what? Some physical abilities won't be melee attacks. Some physical abilities won't be blocked. Some physical abilities will be dots, for example. All this stuff is completely bypassing Shield Block. So shield block is going to do nothing. They are the only tank spec that doesn't have a fully encompassing physical damage reduction mitigation ability. Demon spikes, shield of the righteous, iron fur, as well as the bruise of brewmaster monk, as well as the marrow rend and the armor stack gain of blood decay can all allow them to do this. Warrior is the only one that has a hole in this situation, in this specific situation. In BFA for a period, this was being ignored by the fact that, no pun intended, they were allowed to spam Ignore Pain, which is an Absorb Shield. It is the better type of damage mitigation because it works against everything. Doesn't matter if it's a dot, doesn't matter if it's magical or physical, you're just creating essentially an Absorb Shield on top of yourself. It is similar to the heal of a Guardian Druid or the heal of a Brewmaster Monk through their Stagger. It just applies to everything. The problem is that this situation right now for Protection Warrior, they don't have the haste. They don't have the fast GCDs, they don't have the combos on their talents to generate as much rage, which allows them to cast as many Ignore Pains anymore. So they can't essentially cheat all the damage they are taking with Ignore Pain, they have to make use of Shield Block, but Shield Block is not as effective as most other tanks mitigation abilities. If this wasn't enough, in Mythic Plus they have lost their combo of mega damage with Thunderclap. Unfortunately, we have several thousand Flavor of the Month warriors re-rolling and calling themselves clap, 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 thunder clap, spam clap, only clap, and now their name is ruined because it's pointless, it's useless. It is kind of a meme, in fact, because of how bad it currently is. It only worked half of BFA, you could say, and then now it's not really viable. You could say deeper into the expansion with more haste, faster GCDs, faster regeneration, warriors going to, you know, improve again. But what is certain is that right now is in the weakest spot it has been in the past at least six years just numbers attend purely in terms of representation in raids and in mythic class it is the weakest it's been so for me when you look at warrior harms and fury are doing just fine maybe not the healthy type of fine because they are doing very well in execute phase also thanks to their covenant ability which is enhancing this but also they're, they're doing much worse in overall logs they're Average damage has gotten much worse. So on average, they're doing fine, but it's kind of the extreme. Maybe nerfing their best part a little bit, but buffing them more overall is going to keep them a little bit more, you know, normal. Rather than this extreme dichotomy between their execute phase damage and their normal damage. Whereas for Protection Warrior, I think it's a little bit worse. Um, basically, you can only hope in scaling at this point. 
unless of course the balance tuning of blazer is going to sweep in and help you again just like it happened in bfa but to close i want to i want to finish with a poem i want to finish with a gem which um, the wowhead guide makers have left us this is a good advertisement to their guides always on point always um, nice to, to speculate on, on which specs are going to be good for an expansion so i leave you with this the good news is this, they actually did it. Protection Warrior has been nerfed from BFA. It is not in a position to be the standout number one Mythic Plus tank in Shadowlands, at least not yet. But it's still fast, fun and dynamic. It has terrific damage mitigation tools, a powerful collection of offensive and defensive cooldowns, a fun rotation, a lot of mobility and unique defensive utility with Intervene, Running Cry and Spell Reflection. Protection Warriors are posed to be competitive in Mythic Plus and decent in raids in Shadowlands. That's a much more hopeful expansion start than Protection Warriors usually have. Protection Warriors are in the best starting spot they have been in several expansions and it should be a fun, effective and versatile class in Shadowlands. The future is bright.